Well, I've only got a short message today which works out really well, but uh, why can't we live forever in these bodies? That's the question. I wonder why that is. Why can't we live here on earth forever in these bodies? The answer is obvious because of sin. But we're going to look at a few verses concerning that. So Romans 6 and verse 23, just the first part, a well-known verse that we quote all the time in the, in the gospel. Yeah, so the last verse of Romans chapter 6, for the wages of sin is death, just that first part. So this is why we have death. We've already heard out in the open air, why is there so much suffering going on? Why is there sickness and people suffering and death and all this sort of stuff? It's because of sin. You know, if Adam and Eve hadn't have sinned, we wouldn't have all these problems. Now people just blame God. Why doesn't God fix everything? Why doesn't God get it all right? You know, fix everything and stop people suffering and pain and all that sort of stuff and dying. He doesn't because we've got a free will. And we've chosen to go our own way because of sin. We, we go our own way and that's the problem. So Romans, uh, back now to Romans 3 and verse 23. Another well-known verse. Yeah, Romans 3, 23. Oh, we should really read, I think, verse 22. Uh, even the righteousness of God. Let's, uh, let's go back to verse uh, 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. That means uh, we can't get to heaven by doing good things, by doing good deeds. For by, uh, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So the law was given so that we might see where we've gone wrong, that we've broken God's laws and we've sinned against him. We've done that which is wrong in his sight. And this is why we need a saviour. And the saviour, of course, is our Lord Jesus Christ. But now, verse 21, but now the righteousness of God without the law, see, without doing good things, is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. This is the point. If we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll be saved without any good works whatsoever. You can't work your way to heaven whatsoever. It's by the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you receive the Lord Jesus as your saviour, it means you'll be in heaven and you won't go down to hell. Hell, that terrible place, and then also be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, fire and sulphur for all eternity, the liquid fire that's awaiting those who die without Christ. Terrible situation we put ourselves in. But we can get out of this. We don't need to go to hell. God wants us to be in heaven. And that's why he sent the Lord Jesus to die on the cross. So, But now the righteousness of God without the law, without doing good things to get to heaven, is manifested, so it's shown, it's made obvious, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is the condemnation that's upon us all. When we're born in this world, we're born as sinners. Now, we're not sinners because we sin, but we sin because we're sinners. We have a sinful nature inside of us. We call it the... God calls it the flesh, or the Adamic nature, if you want a sort of a posh word. But it's something that we get from Adam. We've inherited that from Adam and Eve, or Adam. So, and this is the problem we have, but we need to be saved. And that's why we have preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, what it is, sin, so sin is the reason, as we've said, why we have death in the world. And we die because of sin, because we've sinned. And we're sinners. Now, physical death is a separation of, uh, of the spirit and soul from the body. Uh, no need to turn to it, but James 2 and verse 26 says, the first part, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so, um, so we also have a soul that leaves our body when we die. I want to go back to Genesis just to explain that a bit. Genesis chapter 35. Genesis 35, verses 16 to 18. Uh, 
Yeah, verse 16 of Genesis 35. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to come to Ephrath, and Rachel travailed. That means Rachel was going to have a baby. She was going to give birth to a baby, and she had hard labour. She was going through a rough time. And it came to pass uh, when she was in hard labour that the midwife, that's the, the sort of nurse that helped them have children to help deliver the child, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. So she's trying to comfort her, said, Look, it's okay, you're going to have this child as well. But verse 18, the first part, And it came to pass as her soul was in departing, for she died. Now this is God's definition of death. I don't care much for, for, for medical, the medical terms of clinical death. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested about what God says terms as death, and that is when our spirit and soul leave our body. That is the moment of death as far as God is concerned. So she died. Her soul left her body. So we can see that James, uh, from James 2.26 and Genesis 35.18 that the moment of death is when our spirit and soul leave our body. Now if we receive Christ as our saviour we'll go to heaven and that's what God wants. He wants us all to be in heaven. Now if we have not received him we will go to hell. That's the danger that we're in. That's why God says prepare to meet thy God because of his fury against sin, his judgment upon sin. And the judgment of sin was passed upon the Lord Jesus Christ when he died on the cross for each and every one of us. He died on the cross for each and every one of us. There's not a single person he did not die for. So all can be saved if they'll come. It's up to them. You can come to the Lord Jesus in all your sin and all your need. Realize, look, I can't save myself. I'm going to hell. But the Lord Jesus died for me, and if you believe on him, you'll be saved. But if you reject him, you won't be saved and you'll go down to hell, and God does not want that. John chapter 1. We'll go to John chapter 1 and verses 10 to 13. John chapter 10 and uh, John chapter 1 sorry in verse 10 he was in the world meaning the Lord Jesus Christ was in the world and the world was made by him that proves that he made the world he made the whole universe and the world knew him not he came unto his own and his own received him not but as many as received him that's what it's all about receiving the Lord Jesus as our saviour so that we can be in heaven to them those who received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God or the children of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So we need something more than physical life. We need spiritual life. And that life is found in Christ alone. John 3 and verse 3, no need to turn to it, but Jesus answered and said unto him, this is to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And verses 5 to 7 says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's just our bodies, you know, the way we were just all born. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we need the new birth. We need to be spiritually born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Marvel not that I said uh, unto thee, you must be born again. That goes for each and every one of us. We've got to be born again, born from above, born into God's family through faith in Christ. So going back to verse 5 of that John... Uh, chapter 3 there, John chapter 3, uh, what does it mean to be born of water? Now water here is symbolic of the word of God, in other words of the Bible. The words in the Bible, they have the power to save us. The power, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. So we've got to believe, otherwise we'll never ever be in heaven. We won't be saved. We won't receive forgiveness for our sins so that we can enter into heaven the moment we die. And that's God's 
that's what God wants. He's not willing that any should perish. He's such a loving God. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Just change your mind. Agree with God that you're a sinner. Admit the fact to God that, look, I realize that I'm a sinner, but thy son has died for me upon the cross. Then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That means you'll have a home in heaven. You'll have forgiveness for your sins and peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5, no need to turn to it, running out of time, but Ephesians 5 and verses, uh, verse 26, but we'll, we'll read verse 25 first. Husbands, love your wives. That's something to myself. I'm preaching now. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Being born of the Spirit is the Holy Spirit. So we see there, it's concerning the Holy Spirit. So the moment someone believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, they receive the Holy Spirit inside of their body, who gives them the power to live the Christian life. You and I, in and of ourselves, we cannot live the Christian life, because all we can do is act in the flesh. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we be able to please God. So they that are in the flesh, that is those who are not saved, cannot please God. That's the reality. But to please God, we've got to believe on his son. That's the first step. We've got to be saved. We've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, we'll go there. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. Yeah, Ephesians 1 and verse 12 speaking concerning the Christians that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation this is the gospel of your salvation you can be saved if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and that's important it's urgent we need to do it straight away as soon as we understand the message that we're sinners, we're heading down to hell. We need to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In whom after, sorry, also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So as I said, the moment a person received Christ as their saviour, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside that person's body. The person is born again. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So, going back to those words, what is the gospel of your salvation? Let's go to 1 Corinthians in chapter 15, very well-known verses. This is, this is sort of like John 3.16, the gospel in a nutshell, if you want, if you like. So the gospel of your salvation. So, it's, so we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 6. Moreover, brethren, he's talking to the believers, the Christians, who are meeting in a place called Corinth, gathered under the precious name of Christ in that locality. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, and this is it, for I delivered unto you first of all, that is, first of all in importance, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, so we can see here that God has made the provision for our salvation. Knowing that we're sinners, he saw us in all of our desperate need without strength to save ourselves, and yet he's made provision. How that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, according to that which is written in the Word of God, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once. That means over five hundred believers saw him in one head, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. In other words, some have died. That's a, that's a nice way the Lord says that a believer leaves this earth. They've fallen asleep. It, sleep is always to do with the body. I met a man who well, actually bought something off Marketplace when he came to our place and he said about soul sleep. No, no such thing. 
No, we're fully conscious. The moment our spirit and soul leave our body, we're fully conscious. Now, if you're in heaven, it's great. But if you're in hell, it's terrible. Because you're fully conscious of what's, gonna go, what's going on. And you're burning. You're in suffering and burning and torment. Look, God does not want that for you, my friend. And that's why well, he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be our saviour. That's why he died on the cross for you and for me. Now, um, now, John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26... see I've spent far too much time on some of these things so I'm going to have to sort of step on the throttle a bit sorry about that I'll just read out a few verses because we're not going to have time to turn to them and I really don't want to go past six minutes so yeah John chapter 11 and verse 25 and 26 did the Lord uh, so why oh, sorry I'll, I'll go back if we can't live forever in these bodies, why, in John 11, verses 25 and 26, did the Lord Jesus Christ say, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth in me, uh, sorry, liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Why do you say that? Believest thou this? So verse 25 is talking about the body of the believer being raised from the dead, the resurrection. In verse 26, he's talking about the spiritual part of the believer that cannot die because we have everlasting life. And therefore, we cannot die in that sense because the person has been born again. So when we are born in this world, we are dead spiritually. That's our condition before the Lord. That's why we need the new birth. That's why we need to be born again. And uh, Colossians 2, and I'll just read a few of these verses, verses 13 to 15. And you, being dead in your sins, this is before we were saved. This is talking to the Christians, but it's in past tense. We're dead in our sins if we're not saved, if we're not children of God. And the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him. That means made us alive together with Christ, having forgiven you all trespasses blotting out the handwriting and of ordinances that was against us and which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled, uh, sp uh, spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Ephesians 2 verses uh, 1 to 9, you can turn there if you want, because we're nearly finished now anyway. So um, Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 9. Sorry for hurrying, but um, we just got a timeline to work to, and I really like to stick to that if we can, God willing. And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, that's our situation when we're not saved, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's the devil, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation or manner of life in times past, in past tense, in the lusts of our flesh, that's a strong desire of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us together with Christ, or made us alive together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is the message to make your heart rejoice if you're a believer. We've been... We've been uh, made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What a blessing. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding uh, riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. It's all about him. It's all about Christ Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who this afternoon can be your saviour. Will you let him be your saviour? Not like the Calvinists who say... He'll just grab you with a scruff of the neck and, and pull you. That's Paul Washer. No, it's a, it's a will. We have a will. We're either going to receive the Lord Jesus Christ or we're going to reject him. I hope that this afternoon you will receive Christ as your saviour and be saved for time 
and for eternity. So it says here, Yes, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, that is, salvation is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ had to be shed upon the cross for our redemption. Now, redemption is a big word. It means to be bought back by a price that's been paid. So that can be yours this afternoon. You can get right with God by putting your faith in Jesus Christ, believing upon him and receiving him as your saviour. Lord, we come to thee again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thee thanks for sending thy Son to be the Saviour of the world. We just pray that if anyone's in this room or online at this, at this time, we pray for their salvation. Lord, thou knowest their need. Thou knowest their need more than they do. And we just pray, pray that they might be convicted of sin, righteousness and judgment. And today might be the day of their eternal salvation. We give thee thanks for thy word and especially for thy Son in his precious name. Amen.